So about two years ago, my father and I started an ambitious project in starting an automotive customization company. We didn't want to focus on any performance and we wanted to focus primarily on aesthetic appeal. So essentially what the car would look like. This covered everything from air suspension to wheels to wraps to carbon fiber pieces to fully customized as well as refurbished interiors. This included full show ready cleaning as well as exterior and interior modifications. Nothing to do with engine modifications as we didn't want to focus primarily on performance because that market we thought was more saturated than well the appearance of cars. Very quickly we came to the realization that this market was quite a tough one. We wanted to keep at it but I was in my third year of varsity and my father was just nailing a deal in his workplace. It was kind of bad timing but we stuck with it and tried to make it work but then finally we had to close the company down. When the clientele wanted these products uh, we could provide the service but at the same time as these products were fairly expensive and the people that generally wanted to do this or needed to do this to their cars could not afford it. So at the end of the day, it was just this constant loop that we were back where we started. That was my first business adventure and uh, this is why I got this vlog for you today. So what I wanna do for you is I wanna educate you as the audience as well as give you a buying point for if you say going to buy or purchase this product, exactly what you're buying. As I think it's loosely explained when it comes to the companies that are selling the products to you and sometimes you might be buying something that you don't really want or need, probably most of the time spending more than what you should be. So what you can expect from the Basic Benjamin Tech Vlogs is that I'm gonna be giving you a point of reference when it comes to you purchasing these respective products. And the information that you're going to gain as an end user is exactly where to go buy these products, why should you buy these products, and what to expect from these products after purchasing. So let's start right from the beginning. What is this? This is air suspension. Let's get into it. One thing about Airlift Performance is that the packaging is excellent on every single one of their products. This is the rear bag or double bellow bag for the Audi S3 and Golf R platforms. It comes along with quick release valves as well as connectors. These are your fully adjustable shocks. So these are your fully adjustable shocks so that you can twist the mounting key so that it can actually fit back onto the thread. At the top you can see there's a little adjustment screw up the top here. So if you turn to the left you get soft or if you turn to the right you get harder. The standard setting is pretty good for everyday driving. You get your massive rear swing arm where the bag is actually mounted to. So this is completely replaced in the back of your car. It goes on the rear shock, so obviously this is completely replaced. But as you guys can see, over here is where you mount the bag. So here's the bellow. What you'll do is you'll mount it on here with the brackets and pretty much the reason that they do this is because the measurements are slightly different from the standard. What you can expect from getting out of the box is the double rear swing arms, the double bellow rear bags, two fully adjustable dampening shocks, as well as the bellow housing brackets, quick release valves and connectors, as well as documentation and installation guides to fit it yourself. Now these are the front struts. One thing that Elif really does is they package their stuff really well. He has a little separation bracket. Here are two braided lines that you get in the pack. Beautifully braided. Just some quick releases, some bolts and screws. Your adjustments for the actual shock as these bellows are mounted to the shock. Then you've got your sway bar end links. They've changed this design from when I bought mine for my Audi compared to these newer ones. And then finally, the piece of resistance and the beautiful bags, as you guys can see. The really great thing about this is these are your three links that'll adjust to the top of the car. And then obviously your end link will attach here. And then this will obviously fit into the socket where your wheel will be mounted. You can also see that it's a double bellow in the front, same as the rear. These are for the performance struts from Airlift Performance. The car that I used to fit it onto was my old RS3 and it was perfect. Obviously you can see at the top here, you also got your cambo bar adjustments where you can do more camber or less camber. The little thread at the top here is where the adjustment goes in to set your dampening pressure. So, do you want a hard rod or a soft rod? A conventional shock, the spring would be mounted here, but what they've done is they've replaced it 
with a double bellow. So what can be found in the front strut box is a twin braided hose, your full strut and bellow assembly, installation documentation, and quick release valve. So air suspension works on one key fundamental element, and that's air. And the reason I'm trying to explain this to you and the importance of it, that your car is gonna be riding on air. So what I mean by that is that these bellows over here, as explained before, will be filled with air to inflate or deflate on your command. So there's a few key elements that you've got to think about when purchasing air in the long run. Air suspension altogether is an amazing component for a car. Reason being is because you can drop and lift your height at any time that you want. So it means that you can put your car right on the floor or you can lift it up to get over any bump. So practically, it is one of the best add-ons that you can do to any car. But at the same time, you've got to take a few more things into consideration with the kind of car that you want to build. What I mean by that is, say you have a race car. Now, air has been tried and tested against some of the best coils in the world. What happens is it sometimes is as good but sometimes could be detrimental in other areas. What I mean is air suspension, because it has hardly any give because it's all pressured air, it helps with cornering, helps with roll on acceleration, dip under braking, is that it helps your car become more stable. So air suspension, to me, is slightly more stable than coil. From experience, driving on air or airbags, the ride tends to be quite squishy. Now, you obviously can set it up with your shocks and you can do your different damping to make the ride slightly harder or slightly softer, depending on what you want. As well as you can change the threading over here so that your ride height is slightly lower or even higher. Here in South Africa, we have fairly bumpy roads and while driving on them you get this slight squish that while you're driving you, you you feel as if you're kind of going over a subtle bump almost like if you hit a bump you have this slight squish now that's just because the give that is happening in the bags so that means that the bags have less air in them so it makes the ride a lot more squishy yes they do help but they can't take out what a coil can take out meaning there is a volume of air inside these bellows which is moving around with your car and when hitting bumps this is being affected whereas with a coil it is a set tension if you squish a coil on under a bump or if you hit a bump the coil will give as well as the shock will take over to make that a little bit smoother you've got two give factors you're going to give on the shocks and the shocks are going to be able to control the excessive bounce that means that you're also going to be giving a force into the air inside the bag that means that when you hit a bump, it is going to bounce. If you find out the slight bump while you're driving, then airbags are for you. But there is going to be added weight that's going to come from the compressors as well as the tank and the management system. What I mean by this is that all of this needs to function off of something, meaning air. It's pushed into these bags and deflated, but where is all that air stored? And that's where AccuAir comes in. This bad boy over here is a three gallon tank from AccuAir. Now this was custom sprayed uh, to match the Vossen VFS two wheels that I previously had on my S3. This is a three gallon tank. As you guys can see, it's welded along the edges over here. And this is what is built to store the air from the compressors as well as the management system. So the reason that I'm explaining this to you is that I had two of these tanks. You also get a five gallon and uh, this is what it looks like. So this is a massive contraption, yes I know, but this is the system that was in the back of the RS3 when I used to have it. This is a five gallon tank compared to a three gallon. Compared to a three gallon, you guys can start to see the difference in size. The difference between the three gallon and the five gallon, besides volume, is that when it comes to compressors, depending on how much you have, this system uses two compressors. As you guys can see, it has twin braided hoses at the back here, which went straight to the compressor heads, which used to pump this up with air. So the general calculation is two compressors for a five gallon and one compressor for a three. This means that the more compressors you have, the quicker the tanks fill up. From experience, from bagging a car out, meaning hitting one and completely emptying or deflating all of the bags, I have found that it goes through three a three gallon tank every single time. That means that the compressor has to turn on every single time you put the car on the floor so that it can regenerate the air inside the three gallon tank. Out of the five gallon, you can completely deflate all the bags twice without the compressors having to turn on. The advantage of having two compressors is that the five gallon fills up almost as fast, slightly slower than the three gallon with one compressor. But at the end of the day, it's better to have more compressors with a bigger tank so that you can bag the car out and go up and down more without having to refill or turn the comp compressors on 
to refill all of the tanks. That brings me to the last and final point of how is all of this managed. It's managed through a system which is built by either one of the companies from AccuA or Airlift Performance, the previous bags that I showed you. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dive a little bit into AccuA as a company. They have quite an interesting story of where they've been, why they developed the air and where they plan on going with air management in the future. AccuA comes from a quite a humbling story of two brothers wanting to build a 72 Blazer with air suspension, but there was no management system found at that specific time. So what Dustin and Reno did was they started to build a manager system that would help them finish their project. They didn't really think of building a company or furthermore taking it to a level of what it is today. So two forward-thinking companies in the realm of air suspension would be Airlift as well as AccuAir. Airlift have a full start to finish product line where they supply you with air suspension as well as management and then all the documentation of fitting it thereafter. Whereas AccuAir for their bags use third-party companies or they just make a selective few which they call the sport kits which are based in their company for specific cars like on the blacked out A5 that I did that was the sport kit from AccuAir but when it comes to anything else like when I had to do my RS3 I had to use HP Drive Tech. So there's a few companies that do supply air uh, as well as airbags and some are great, some are good and some are just the worst. When it comes to air management though AccuA is one of the more forward-thinking than airlift performance. Now the reason I say this is because their company is based around air management and building applications for your cars that will better and quicken as well as forward-think and modernize your end product as well as end use. So they're very specific in end user as well as functionality and aesthetic appeal as a whole. So let's talk prices. When it comes to air management, which is an extra add-on to the actual bags that you have to buy, let's begin with airlift performance, seeing as we have their struts. One of them being the autopilot V2, which just manages pressure. So all the heights are adjusted based off of pressure. They have another system called the 3P, which also works on pressure, which is more of their upgradable to the 3H, which works on height as well as pressure, which uses height sensors as well as pressure from the bags to manipulate the height of your ride at any given time. AQA also has three applications which they use, the same as airlift performance, except they use an E-level system, which is patented by them as well as designed specifically from them. Their options are the E-level, which is a height system which works with a touchpad where you've got your three settings as well as a fourth, which will completely bag and empty the car. One, which is quite low, two which is drive height, and three which is supposed to lift the car to get over high bumps or curbs. And then a final bag out which completely drops the car to the chassis. Recently AccuA have been secretly working for the past few years to develop something pretty amazing which has launched this year at SEMA. It has been in a beta version for this past year and it is called the Endotank. The Endotank also comes in a 3 or a 5 gallon but the management is controlled within the tank. It is a bullet design aluminium tank which is put together on both sides with the option of two or four valves situated inside of the tank. So you completely move the management from outside of the tank to inside of the tank meaning you save space in the back. A new development which has just been launched at SEMA is the new Endo CVT tank. What it is, is, is the Endo tank, except it has a compressor built inside. This is gonna be only released next year, February, so we can't even get our hands on one just to see what it looks like or how it operates but it's being displayed at SEMA this year and apparently it is something to see. So the final point is my point on air suspension and why you should purchase it or not. First, figure out why you're gonna be using it. Is it gonna be for show or performance? That'll determine if you're gonna be buying bags for the shows just to get your car on the floor or if you're gonna get a system which can manage under heavy stress, meaning performance, so performance bags. Then once that's decided is you have to decide on a management system. What I would suggest is going and just breaking the bank and buying something rather expensive because in the long run, it'll last a lot longer, especially when it comes to your safety because bags are gonna be connected to your wheels of your cars. The more expensive, the better quality the product is. And in the long run, if something breaks or if something's faulty, you can easily replace it. And then finally, matching everything up. Go to someone that is good at installing it. You can install it yourself and it'll take a little bit more time, but at least you'll understand it but essentially go to a company or a shop that understands how to apply those parts. And remember to ask questions. I'll drop all the links in the bio below where you can go and contact AccuA as well as Airlift and HP Drive Tech and you can ask them all the questions that you need to. They got helpful staff and they're excellent. Just a disclaimer, none of this was sponsored to me. I'm just giving you my personal opinion on it. 
my personal experience and final point that I'm going to be making today is when it comes to bags, I would highly suggest airlift performance just based on if you want your car to be fast. They've got bulletproof products and I've never had a problem or a day's hassle with them. Would be the management system where I would obviously go with AccuAir. The reason being is because AccuAir just focus predominantly on management and their management is bulletproof. I haven't found better, I haven't experienced better. AccuAir is definitely the way and their staff are super friendly and super helpful. It's been great to have you guys. I hope this has helped you. I hope you guys liked this. If you did, drop a comment in the comment section below and tell me what you liked, what you didn't like, and if you want to see more of automotive tech vlogging, as well as a subscribe, it'll be really awesome. I'll really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much for stopping by, guys. See you in the next one. Peace.